Hello friends, for today's video we're going to be looking at episodes 6 through 10 of Attack on Titan. I'm going to start with some general thoughts before diving into the specific reactions for each of the individual episodes. And what I'm going to say I wouldn't even categorize necessarily as a criticism or even a negative. It's just a personal taste thing that I don't love that I do think that the show has leaned into a couple of times. And we'll get into the details of what I'm referring to when we go through the episodes. But the two things, one of them would be the very overt drawing your attention to something. And what I mean by this is the show doesn't really currently at the moment seem to allow us to piece things together. They seem to really want to make sure that your hand is firmly held and they lead you to certain conclusions. And I prefer a little bit more subtlety. For one, I think that this show is obviously for a more mature audience and thus a lot of people who are going to be engaging with this story have probably watched a lot of anime or manga or just film or TV shows in general or they read a lot and so we're accustomed to having symbolism that we see and then we dissect and then we can predict or some people might just come to something just for the fun of it and they don't really <laughs> try to piece together things but a lot of us have that built in because we've consumed stories for years and as a result when they do have these more overt drawing your attention to certain things it does take away from the opportunity for the viewer to to determine for themselves or predict for themselves. And it happened a few times with a few different things in this batch of episodes. One of the other reasons why I don't love this is because something that I absolutely adore when I'm, when I do get the discovery, when it's finally revealed, some big thing is shown to you. I love when you go back and you are like, oh my gosh, they showed us all along. Look at all the clues. If they show you the clues, subtly then that works really well but if they show you the clues and they have a character look and they're like wait a second i don't recall that being there before and i'm just like no don't please stop doing that now you're just telling me pay attention pay attention to this detail and it's just not my favorite way of having something foreshadowed and it does take away i think from the rewatchability or rereadability of a story it's not the biggest thing in the world. And again, it's a personal taste thing. It's not by any means an objective fault of the shows. It's just something that this batch of episodes leaned into. And then the other thing that I don't love <laughs> that I know is just kind of a general, it's something that you get a lot anytime you have an adaptation from some kind of story that was written previously, which is the very long internal monologues. And this show is definitely taking advantage of those. And I understand that it is a means of developing the characters and giving you insight into them. And so I don't mind the use of this. I just think that the show is utilizing it quite a bit and I wouldn't mind if we scaled back just a little. I know something like Demon Slayer definitely leaned into this to a point that actually took away for me from some of my enjoyment as there would be these amazing scenes that are about to happen and you'd have this really amazing epic stakes that are being developed and then we have to pause so that we can really sit with a character's thoughts on everything that's happening. And in combination with the previous point I made, it does sort of slow everything down and it doesn't allow you to piece anything together for yourself or it does but it lessens that so I haven't loved those elements again not by any means a major criticism just personal taste but jumping into the specifics for these episodes episode six if you need a reminder this one is the world the girl saw and this might be one of my favorite episodes so far of these first ten and it's funny because it has very little to do with the Titans and it's all about Mikasa and her her reasons for being so loyal to Eren, the ferocity that she has. We're kind of seeing where that developed in its origin. And at the very beginning of the episode, as you would expect, because our last batch ended with Eren seemingly being killed by a Titan. And so Armin, who witnessed this and who was saved by Eren, feels so terrible. He's somebody who already has a tendency to lock up anyway. So then to see this, he's like, I'm useless. I'm worthless. When Armin is feeling really down, he thinks strength preys on weakness. And I wrote, you didn't bring them down. These Titans are 
near impossible to defeat and it's so much pressure to put on these people who are barely out of training so i just kind of wanted to tell armin like hey man it's not your fault but i also wrote hey the string music here is great once again i said this in the first set of episodes the music in this show is phenomenal but i believe it was a cello uh that was playing during this whole armin feeling bad about himself and feeling like he's ruining his friends lives or leading to their deaths I thought that the music during this whole section was so good. It was so beautiful. So often I just want to be like, I kind of want to learn this. <laughs> but anyway, I also had a quote from a merchant. This is a small little section of this episode where there is somebody who seems to be a part of the Merchant's Guild or the head of the Merchant's Guild. And they are trying to shove their, their cargo through this very narrow opening to a point where it's holding up the people that are trying to get through to safety. And this person couldn't care less that he is jeopardizing the safety of all of these civilians. He just cares about his belongings, about the things that he wants to sell that would make him money. So the quote is, this cargo is worth more than you'll make in your lives. And I wrote down, cares more about money than people, which is a thing that I noted about the, not necessarily the money component, but just the way in which it seems like people that are in positions of power, even if it's not that significant amount of power, but just some power, the immediate dismissal of everyone else's lives. It's a very uh, cutthroat wor world, I would say, as far as how they view one another, because in the first section, I noted the way in which they refer to the refugees, and they seem to compare them to rats, which I thought was notable. And then here you're seeing this head of a merchant's guild not care whatsoever that these people are potentially all gonna lose their lives because he needs to get his stuff through first. And Mikasa, I was like, come on, when she shows up and this guy is doing all of this, I was like, yeah, let's go. And the guy is telling her off and insisting that he's gonna get her in trouble or whatever. And she said, that word gonna come from beyond the grave. And I was like, yes. <laughs> So Mikasa so far, my favorite character, I think. I love her. She's the coolest. She's awesome. I don't know if that's an unpopular thing to feel this far in because while Armin is sweet and I like him, he is just, I mean, this whole section of this, the fight for, the struggle for Trost is the title of this. It lasts for a while and he is sort of relegated to being scared <laughs> for so much of it. He does start to come into himself and the last chunk of these episodes really has his friends putting their trust in him and he's starting to maybe believe in himself a little bit more. But the poor guy is just so scared. And then obviously Aaron's not really here for a good chunk of this. He's absent. And so Mikasa is sort of stole the show and I'm fine with it. I really like her character. I like that she's so quietly lethal, but also compassionate and stands up for what is right. Now getting a little bit further into this episode, you're seeing her parents were killed brutally and horribly in front of her and then she was going to be sold. And apparently because of her race and how she's seen as this commodity, this exotic thing, to have and even the way they talk about her like well she's only half so and just they again the people of this world are horrible in the first section i talked about in talking about aaron's uh anger and how he's always upset about everything and i had written like but your life seems like okay <laughs> leading up to of course then the awful things that had occurred but just a little snippet we saw at the very beginning it looked kind of nice and picturesque and now I feel like a complete moron. And I, I assumed, I figured there's more than just the Titans that are a threat in this world. But my goodness, are people absolutely terrible in this, arguably worse than the Titans? Uh, some of them, not all of them. If we could just direct the Titans towards certain people, maybe it wouldn't be such a big deal. But in saying that, then I'm like, was there some... I still want to know the origin of the Titans because it would seem we're kind of learning some of that. And a part of me is like, were they at some point meant to be some kind of weapon that got out of control? Anyway, I want to get back to the Mikasa stuff. So a quote that I had written was, old perverts at the Capitol. Because when they have taken her and they're talking about who they're going to sell her to, this is what they say. And we've already gotten a couple of very brief moments where we see the elites, you could say, of this society and i already touched on the way they talk about people as being less than but it does make me wonder 
if whoever they would have sold her to is a character, one, that we've technically already seen, but we just don't know their name, maybe, or if it's a character that we're going to see in the future, and if Mikasa is somehow going to find out, and then if she's going to get revenge on behalf of her parents, and kind of herself, in a sense. So curious if we're going to get that because this show while the big antagonists obviously and literally are the titans i do wonder if we're going to get these smaller arcs that are very personal to the characters and i don't know if we're done i don't know if it's just like here's a flashback mikasa's backstory okay now you know more about her and then now and forever it's just going to be about her being awesome against titans i don't really predict that's how it's going to go i think you're going to see aspects of that still continue to play a part in her character development and her overall arc. I hope so, anyway. So I guess that's a mini prediction. Um, also, I wrote, well, n now her loyalty makes sense <laughs> because I had said in the first section, like, I'm assuming at some point we're gonna understand why she's so incredibly loyal. And yeah, I get it now. Also, oh my gosh, Aaron just as a young child, cause he had to have been quite young when this happened. And the fact that he just showed up with his knife and then stabbed that guy in the throat and then fought the other guy off. And also the suspense when she was like, where's the third one? I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, Aaron's just built different, <laughs> I'll say, and has been for a long time. I also really liked the color. So during this whole section where Mikasa is seeing Aaron and he's being choked by this third person that he hasn't yet killed and she doesn't know if she can do it kill this individual. And then they kind of transform her where she's green and red. And she's having this moment where she's realizing all of life is also at the cost of death. In order for some to live, something else must die. And you see the bugs. She is thinking about like having seen bugs killing each other and how they have to eat and things like that. And it kind of seemed like there's this symbolism of her being like the like the bug itself because of its colors and everything. So I thought that was really interesting. I noted that some of the show's storytelling is a little bit on the nose, but this is one where I feel like you could dissect the color use. And I'll be curious to see in the future how they depict Mikasa when you get other scenes where she is having to tap into that, this, this a reserve of anger and I have to fight for what's right. I have to protect people. I wonder if we're going to see certain color usage in those moments or not. We might not. It could have just been for the scene, but I really liked it. And then I put the scarf. <laughs> so as soon as Aaron grabbed his scarf, I was, I wrote my notes, all oh, the scarf she always wears. So I, this episode was so good. And then I also wrote, I kind of dig how much they're making us wait with Aaron, meaning this whole episode, you are still kind of like, so is Aaron dead? And I liked it. I liked that they didn't just immediately are like, just kidding, he's fine. I liked that they made us wait. And this episode was fantastic. I really thought that this is, I mean, I've said it how many times already? I think this is my favorite episode so far. This is going to be a hard one to beat. I'm very curious for you, was this one of your favorites when you first watched the show? If you have seen the show, and if you're like me and you're watching it for the first time, how has this episode sat with you? Anyway, I spent so much time <laughs> talking about that first episode, so now let's go into episode seven, which would be Small Blade. So my first note was, geez, what an opening, because you're seeing the people that are meant to be supplying the others are all holed up and terrified, and they are not leaving where they're at, which is causing this catastrophe for the, the battle at large. And you have these group of individuals who have put tables around themselves and they're hiding and the Titans are kind of looking through the windows and one of them is trying to, it seems, get his gun ready and then he sticks it in his mouth and you can guess what happens next if it's been a bit since you've watched. And that was very dark and heavy. Their deaths are terrifying and brutal and it does it over and over and over again. I mean, you have these people that seem like they're so brave, they're so ready and then once push comes to shove, they all seem to be terrified when the Titans get a hold of them. Going back to Mikasa, though, everybody is so down. Everybody thinks all is lost. It's impossible. And she sort of rallies the troops. And she does it by calling them all a bunch of cowards and telling them pretty much that they're all useless and she'll do it all herself. And then they're all like, well, we can't just let her go alone. And then they all go along, too. And I wrote Mikasa with some reverse psychology, eh? She's... 
At first I had written well, they need Aaron to yell at them. And then immediately after I wrote that, uh, Mikasa yelled at them. And I also said, time for Mikasa to free Aaron like he did for her. Because we'd just gotten this previous episode where he was the one that kind of came to her aid. And then she did end up helping him as well. And I'm like, okay, I need a reversal of that now. I need, Or I guess you almost could say I need this to play out again. Where he helped save his friends and now I need her to go save him. Except for I didn't really know at this moment what that would entail or how she could do it. I was just like, I need her to somehow be involved, which she was, which was cool. But we'll get to that. Um, I thought Jean was going to do something. Guess not. <laughs> it was a, a note I wrote. And this is, there's a, I don't want to say which war movie because there's a lot. And if you've never seen it, I don't want to spoil it. But there is a war movie where there is somebody who's supposed to be fighting and protecting people and this soldier locks up and then one of the enemy soldiers comes in and just looks at him and doesn't even bother taking him out because it's almost like, yeah, you're useless anyway. And in a sense, I feel like the weight of that, I think that was replicated, not replicated, but I think it was done well. It's a similar thing. And I think it was done really well by showing Sean, who's supposed to be somebody who is a leader and he sees somebody get grabbed by a titan and then rather than him going in and trying to deal with it two other people try to deal with it and then they're all screaming and he's just standing there feeling useless and that was i i like that the show is really not having everybody just be an instant hero everybody's amazing everybody swoops in because the cost is so high that the risk of dying it's pretty high as well. I mean, you're more than likely not going to save the day if you do leap into action. You're probably going to die. So it makes sense that these people are terrified. And I don't feel like a lot of stories do this. I feel like a lot of times our heroes, or at the very least the people we follow, are the ones that always do the right thing. They always try to rescue people and pretty much always they succeed. Maybe there'll be that one time they don't. And then that is a really devastating death and it sits with them and it haunts them and then they feel bad, but that's why they have to fight even more. And this one's like, look at everybody being terrified and being useless and everybody thinking about themselves. And of course they would because this is so scary. You know, I just think that this show does that quite exceptionally. And then <laughs> I, when it seems like all is going to be lost and that uh, Mikasa is going to die and then I put, oh, a titan fight, because the one titan comes in and hits the other one when they're, she's in the middle of the two. And then I wrote, well, sort of, because the one takes out the other so fast. And then I wrote, it's Aaron, you know, it's got to be Aaron, right? And also, Aaron Titan, which is what I'm going to call him, or Titan Aaron maybe is a better title. Titan Aaron looks really cool, right? I feel like it looks awesome. It kind of looks like a vampire. Don't love the flashbacks for things that just happened. I didn't mention this in my general thoughts. And I wouldn't say that the show has done this too many times, but I do think that I don't mind flashbacks, meaning not the formal ones like what we got with Mikasa. I don't mind those either. But what I'm referring to specifically here is sometimes something will have just happened. And then within that same episode, only a few minutes later in like slow motion, it'll show that same scene again. And I'm like, we just saw that scene. I don't need you to have a flashback for something I just saw two minutes ago. You can just have the characters think about it while doing other things. But anyway, so I didn't love that that happened. And then I wrote, okay, if it is Aaron, the Titan, which it was, but I wrote, okay, if it is Aaron, having Mikasa feel something, uh, it's, a, it's a little much. So this is an example of what I was talking about where I instantly was like, I think that's Aaron. I really think that that's Aaron and I'm excited to see how it's Aaron and what's even going on. And I like being held in suspense. That was something I complimented about the previous episode. So to have her be like, I don't know. She didn't say this exactly. I'm paraphrasing, but she had this thought of like, I don't know what it was, but I felt something with that Titan and I don't know why. Or what. And it's just like, <sighs> thank you for just, you just told us now that it's Aaron basically. Right. I mean, it was a little too heavy handed for my taste, but that's fine. It's not a deal breaker. Now getting into episode eight. This one's titled, I Can Hear His Heartbeat. And I was, <laughs> I was in the middle of writing, lure this Titan to the others. And then Armin said that as I was writing that note. So I was like, okay, cool. Armin's the idea guy and I'm on board. And I like that he's getting some of his confidence back. But anyway, he even used the word lure, which is what I was starting to write. So I'm with Armin there. And then making your escape while they're distracted, eating your friends, that's a little traumatizing. So once again, Sean, I'm like, Sean's gonna have 
so much settled within him because he was just watching the other individuals getting eaten. And then finally, he kind of snaps out of it a little bit. And he's, he's like, wow, they're distracted. And I'm like, man, what a horrible, while they're eating our friends, let's make a run for it, which it makes sense. It's logical. I just feel like that's so dark. And after he was doubting himself as a leader, he has one of his other um, scouts telling him like, you're a great leader, Sean. And he's like, huh? Immediately, another person gets gets taken by a titan and it's like well <laughs> uh you know again the i think typical thing that would happen is right after he gets this told to him and he gets this confidence boost he would turn around and he would save that person and that's not what happened at all that person's just a goner they're they're dead and then they bust through the windows and then they see the people that have been all you know hiding this whole time but it is kind of funny that they have stuff that'll happen that's a little cliche followed by something that is very bold. And I almost, I wondered this about the first chunk too. Like, do they give you the cliche things to give you this false sense of confidence as to what's going to happen and then they pull the rug out from under you? Or is it just that it happens to have some cliche things and some bold things at the same time? I'm not sure. It, I can't tell just yet if it's intentional or not. Going back to Jean, though, when he starts yelling at all of the people that have been hiding and telling them that they're useless and pathetic, I wrote, you might be projecting a little bit. <laughs> I think he feels this guilt himself, and he is now putting that on everybody else, because just currently, while he is braiding himself and he does feel bad, you can see that in his, or hear it in his internal monologue, I don't know if he's quite ready to give up on himself because to give up on himself is to give up on all of his troops and it's easier than to turn around and yell at all these other people which they did i mean they did contribute to a lot of people dying but i will be curious to see how we dissect this character as we progress through because i feel like there's a lot of potential with it, with him but anyway back to titan aaron before it's been revealed officially that it's aaron i wrote it even seems to have aaron's eye color so that i thought was interesting and then i really enjoyed i i'm so sorry i don't remember his name i'm currently thinking of him as angry ang because he kind of looks like ang just a tiny bit if he were drawn in the attack on titan style but that character who is currently with Mikasa and Armin, this big, beautiful SOB is our ticket out of here, which I thought was such a great line. And then it was immediately followed because they're talking about how they're going to try to get that Titan to fight every other Titan for them. And then right after this line that I thought was so funny and it's like optimistic and hopeful and let's go. Somebody's like, you mean fighting fire with fire? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, man, obviously that's what he's saying. I just thought that was really funny. And then Jean's like, are you crazy? I'm paraphrasing again, but he's basically like, are you crazy? What happens when that one's done with all the other Titans? He's going to come for us. And both my husband and I were like, hey man, one is better than all of them. <laughs> come on. Like, I get what you're saying that you might have to fight him after the fact, but it's still way better than having to fight all of them and potentially this one too. So anyway, I'm like, Sean, think for just like, a millisecond. It's a good plan. And then Gabby, I wrote Gabby is Fiona Frost. Fiona Frost is from, uh, from Spy Family, which is a very different show from this one, but also this character is basically, I feel like the same character, but as soon as she's, she's been introduced already, but when she was talking this episode, I was like, I think that's Fiona Frost. Sasha, I was, I was like, wait, that's Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, right? So that was kind of fun. I get really excited about voice actors because obviously you don't see their faces. Um, but I just think that some of them do such amazing work and bring some of our favorite characters to life. So whenever I hear, I'm like, wait a second, is that the same person? I get kind of excited and I want to sort of shout them out. So I thought that was pretty fun that it's Aloy and Fiona. Um, so key for us, and then I wrote dream. So that was my next note is key for us because somebody uses that phrase and they're talking about this Titans and they're like, I thought this would be the key for us. And I'm like, the key, it's the dream. <laughs> Something to do with that dream from Armin's, or not Armin, excuse me, Aaron's dad, because I noted that in the first batch, I'm like, what's up with that dream? I swear his dad knows something. And I feel like that we're going to get these Titan fights and we're going to somehow be able to control them or turn into them or I don't know, but I just, I had these predictions. So that phrasing seemed very deliberate. And I liked that phrasing because Unlike what I have said is not my 
personal taste. It didn't feel way too obvious because it was a little bit sort of sneakier with like, I thought this Titan was going to be the key. And I was like, ah, I like that relation and that use of words to the imagery that we got before and his dad shouting the key and stuff like that. I thought that that was a clever way to tie that in. Getting into the last couple of episodes, I didn't write nearly as much for these ones because I did feel like these ones really kind of dragged out certain scenes a little longer than maybe I thought was entirely necessary. I also just found that the previous couple episodes were so engaging that these ones were kind of coming to a little bit of a pause in the intensity and thus it kind of was a pacing thing where we had this really height of excitement and then this is sort of settling just a bit not that it's all entirely over but we're sort of segueing into the next big big part of this uh struggle for trust but anyway for episode nine this is what happened to his left arm is the title which i thought was kind of funny and i wrote levi who to my point again about getting excited about voice actors, is Vincent, I think, from Final Fantasy VII, which is a lot of fun. Then Sean is like, oh, we have a gag order placed on us. We're not allowed to talk about things. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Once again, I I don't just think this is relevant to what happens in these two episodes about Aaron and the fact that they are now wondering, okay, is he a threat to us? Should we kill him now when he's in human form? I don't feel like the gag order is just in reference to this, although the characters might think it. It just furthers this idea that the elites, that the people on top, that the people with the most power, like, they know something. I, I'm excited to see where the show goes with all of that because I'm always a fan of political intrigue or intrigue of that sort. Corruption aspects, the potential, because I don't know for a fact. Oh, I'm going to be so excited for that. And then I, I wrote... I'm so sorry. I didn't love this. I wrote, the scene is a little, it's a little dumb. It lasts so long. The scene where they're like, you're a titan. Are you a titan or a human? And Aaron's like, what the heck's going on? Your silence is defiance, basically. And then it just, it lasts for a really long time. And then we go into the next episode, which is response. And you see that Aaron transformed really quickly into a titan and i'm still like i don't quite know what's going on but i don't mind i'm i'm looking forward to discovering more i kind of like that the characters don't quite know what's going on either i like being somewhat in the dark it makes me look forward to getting to further episodes and having more of those discoveries but i wrote <laughs> do the flowers mean something because there's this great image of aaron and you see those purple flowers and so i wrote oh do the flowers mean something and then you have arm and look and this is what I meant by stop basically pointing the camera and zooming in uh, metaphorically on what you want us to pay attention to. Let us notice these details or let us get to appreciate them once the reveals happen because Armin said, those flowers weren't there before or he thinks it. And I'm like, gosh, darn it. <laughs> Let me notice these things. Anyway, I've, I'm sorry, I'm getting loud. And also I've already hit this point. I also wrote in my notes, go, like really frustrated because Aaron is starting to think about that dream and he's starting to have some of the memories come to him about everything going on with his dad. And he's sitting there like, ugh, why would my father keep this a secret? Why? And like, they've already established that they need to get out of there because otherwise they're gonna fire at them again. And so him just having this meltdown, which I get wondering, what the heck, dad? Why didn't you give me more information? What do you know? I get having those thoughts. But I'm like, you can have those thoughts and get out at the same time. You can think and move simultaneously. So I was, I was like, go, oh, come on. And then Mikasa, I wrote, thank you, Mikasa, because she's like, come on, Aaron. And then Dot Pixis, I believe is his name, shows up. And <laughs> I like the little intro of he's really eccentric and unusual. And then he ends up saying something like, getting eaten by a titan's not the worst way to go, especially a sexy lady one. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. I'm glad that after all of the horrifying things that the show has delivered to us thus far that you're now getting a little bit of levity. I appreciate that. And it seems like, because we briefly saw a little bit of Levi and that other woman that he works alongside who seems very like, yeah, let's take out titans and she is fun, it seems like, uh, with that process. Um, but I'm wondering if we're going to start to balance out the ones that are perhaps a little bit more 
experienced and can figure out how to find the, the fun in, not that this whole thing seems fun, but they're so experienced that they know how to find the lighter moments, the fun moments, how to enjoy their jobs, which seems like a bizarre concept. But I'm excited to see how those characters are going to mesh with the ones that have currently just really experienced their first battle as essentially soldiers are probably extremely traumatized and don't know how they're going to keep going. I'm hoping we get to see sort of a mesh of these two. And that makes me really excited for the next batch of episodes. I know that the struggle for Trost, I don't believe, is over just yet. Um, so I'm really interested to see how all this is going to play out and the aftermath. I already, I think, kind of tied some of my predictions into while I was discussing the episode. So I don't know that I have any any to talk about separate, but those are my thoughts for episodes six through 10. I think episode, as I said before, episode six, I think really stood out to me. I'm a little bummed that we had episodes nine and 10 just stretch so much that I, do, I feel like we really could have condensed that and kind of moved along, but I, I don't mind. I, I am looking forward very much to seeing what's going to happen next. I think that the show has established a lot of things. It's put hints in that I'm looking forward to seeing how those are revealed and play out. And there's also mysteries that I have no idea the answers to. So I'm really looking forward to those also. But anyway, that's it for the second batch of episodes for Attack on Titan. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on them. Thanks so much for watching, though. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye. When did you determine it was that people could become titans? Oh, like when it was like, there's something about it, that one in particular. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. <laughs> When did you figure it out, Luna? I knew all along. Luna's already watched the show three times. <laughs> I didn't know that, Luna. Don't spoil us, okay? <laughs>